Hey guys, welcome to video 23 for Mr. McGee's ninth grade biology class at Arizona School for the Arts. Today, an overview of respiration. So one of the things that we need to know is when we talk about respiration, what we're talking about, what we mean. We're not really talking about breathing in and out. We're talking about doing something with the food that we eat. Generally speaking, carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins are matter, pieces of matter that contain stored energy. And by breaking those molecules down, we release the energy that's in them. And we don't use that directly, but our, the cells of our body have a process that's used to turn that energy into ATP, which our cells then can use. That process is respiration, or better known as cellular respiration. We need to talk about some new electron carriers. Remember, we, I had a description in the last video of trying to move hot coals from a barbecue, and Hector would try to use his hands, whereas almost everybody else would use something like a shovel or tongs to move those hot coals. Well, we've got two new ones, two new electron carriers that are going to be used to grab high-energy electrons and transport them safely around throughout, throughout different parts of the cell. And they are nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD, and flavine adenine dinucleotide, or FAD. NAD plus is a molecule that will accept two high-energy electrons and one proton during cellular respiration. It becomes NADH when that happens. FAD will accept two electrons and two protons during respiration to become FADH2. So now our, our, our molecules for capturing energy look like this. NAD plus and H plus and two electrons create NADH. FAD and two hydrogen ions and two electrons create FADH2. And just as we saw in photosynthesis, ADP and PI combine to create ATP. And the formula for releasing energy are just the opposite. NADH becomes NAD and H plus and two electrons, and that releases energy. FADH2 becomes FAD and two hydrogen ions and two electrons, and that releases energy. And of course, ATP breaks down into ADP and PI to release energy. The cellular respiration formula looks like this. This is called aerobic cellular respiration because it utilizes oxygen. Six oxygen molecules will combine with one molecule of glucose to result in six CO2 molecules, six H2O molecules, and also energy that is captured and stored as ATP. Aerobic cellular respiration comes in three parts, and they happen in different places in the cell. The first part, glycolysis, happens in the cytoplasm. The second part, the Krebs cycle, happens in the fluid matrix of the mitochondria. Dun, 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 dun. And the third part, electron transport, happens in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. This is what it would look like in a diagram. Notice that glycolysis in the teal on the left happens outside of the mitochondria. It releases some ATP, but more importantly, it gives us the raw materials for the two other parts of respiration that happen inside the mitochondria. The Krebs cycle happens in the matrix, dun, 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 dun. and the electron transport, transport chain happens in the inner membrane. Glycolysis is a simple process. It happens when special enzymes take glucose and break it into two molecules of pyruvate. Glucose is a six carbon molecule, and each molecule of pyruvate is three carbons long. This happens in the cytoplasm, and it's a very quick, easy way to make some ATP. The Krebs cycle utilizes pyruvate and breaks it down into CO2. It uses oxygen to do this, so it's an aerobic process. 
This cycle is a series of energy extracting reactions that creates NADH, FADH2, and ATP. When the electron transport chain goes to work, it basically allows the electrons from the Krebs cycle and glycolysis to power mo molecular pumps in the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. These molecular pumps move hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space. Eventually, the hydrogen ions rush through ATP synthase to create ATP. It looks something like this. Here's the high energy electrons that are carried from glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. They release the electrons, which travel through a series of molecules embedded in the inner membrane. Those molecules are used to pump hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space, the space between the inner and outer membrane of the mitochondrion. Because all the hydrogen ions are positively charged, they tend to want to push back through the membrane into the matrix. Dun, 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 dun. But they can't do that because they are charged particles and can't go directly through the inner membrane. A special channel is an enzyme called ATP synthase. It has a hole through which the charged hydrogen ions can move. And as they push their way through ATP synthase into the matrix, dun, 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 they cause ATP synthase to spin. And the spinning of ATP synthase is the physical energy that's used to take ADP and combine it with PI to form ATP. The total energy gain of respiration is as follows. For every one glucose molecule, glycolysis produces 2 ATP. Krebs cycle produces 2 ATP. And then the electron transport chain creates a total of 32 ATPs. That's a total of 36 ATP molecules gained for every one glucose molecule. Well, that's the end of this video. Please complete the corresponding review questions and be prepared to show me notes in class. And as always, here's your bunny of the day.